But as I was coming up, this became like a major focal point and starting point for me. It's called 23 Park. Right. Here on 166th Street and Tinton Avenue, which okay. was really important to me. And where I used to play is this place called the Parky House right there. Right. Your man calls it Park and Recreations. Park. And, <laughs> right. No, it's the fucking Parky House, no. man. <laughs> Two parks I used to play. 63 Park, I would call it the the mid-sized park and then 23 Park, which is probably the major place. Uh, I used to, you know, ask permission to run an extension cord out of the door of the parky house and we used to set up right here. Okay. And we used to play. So this was kind of like my area for trying new music, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, and you gotta understand uh, hip hop, at that time was based on what the DJ was playing. Right. And he, the, who was the holder of the hottest break, ah. was the man at the time. So sometimes it was Herc, and sometimes mm -hmm. it was Bam, and sometimes it was Flash. Yeah. You know, so when I had Bob J James take, take, take me to the Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. you know, I was a man when, uh, when Herc had Apache, right. he was the man. And when Bam had Trans Europe Express and Indiscreet and, and, and all these things, mm -hmm. you know, it's like he was the man. So, you know, this, 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 this thing called the Bronx, man, is where it all, yeah. it all started. So what, was, what would you say your experience was like? Paint the picture for us. Was, how many people were out here? Was it 500, 220? I'd say 700 to 1,000 people was okay. there. You know, and we had some of the most dopest break dancers. Right. We had some of the most incredible people that did that dance called the hustle. Right. You know, we had the, 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 the most amazing graffiti artists because you got to understand during this time period, mm -hmm. talking to the beat of music did not exist right. yet. Right. Not yet. Uh -huh. I hadn't perfected the quick mix theory yet yeah. where the body of music was a bed for a human being to speak on. I was still in the perfecting aspect of it during this period of time. Right. You know, so for me, um, this was a testing ground for a pop break, a rock break, a jazz break, mm -hmm. a blues break, a funk break, an yeah. R&B break, a disco break, uh, an alternative break, a Caribbean break. This mm -hmm. is, was testing period. Right. While the Godfather was smashing it on the west side of the Bronx, mm -hmm. Little flashes over here, <laughs> doing a little something with my little whack ass sister, you know, so pretty much. Recently, the Google, you know, Google paid homage to what was, what was largely considered to be the birth date of hip hop. Right. And um, you responded in your way with, sure. with your open letter to her. Yes. I had a lot of questions uh, before your open letter, mm -hmm. and I have questions after your open letter. Sure. So let's talk about the open letter. What prompted you to do that? I think what had happened was when I was asked to be a part of it, mm -hmm. I applauded the fact that finally, like, finally, this platform is huge as Google wants to take this error in time that a lot of people don't know about, and they're going to send it out mm -hmm. to billions of people. Right. I was really wonderful about that. But what I wanted to make really clear is there's, there's technical aspect and there's events and times and places, uh, places people and things mm -hmm. that um, need to be addressed right. during that period of time that I really wanted to address and I wanted to make it, you know, uh, clearer mm -hmm. how things took place and how it was done. Right. And I come from a place where I'm always respectful, you know, this Grandmaster Flash, the performer, but then it's Joseph Sadler, mm -hmm. the scientist. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make it absolutely clear that we need to make it clear how this thing broke down from a microscopic perspective, where a lot of times things are done and just a, a, a huge, brilliant picture, and it's like, whoa, wow. Right. But then that teeny part of the painting right there wasn't looked at. Right. So 
if we if we if we're going to look at it from a painting's perspective, we need to know what the reds represent and what the blues represent and what the turquoises represent, mm -hmm. you know, what the yellow represents. So I was more or less going into the colors and depicting. Okay, this yellow is why this blue came into it right. that made it green because yellow and blue make green right. where the yellows were big in, during this announcement and the blues were big during this big announcement but nobody said okay so green mm -hmm. green wasn't depicted right. so i had to express that there was someone thinking about this and these yellows and these blues were experimented on and they made green so when you're looking at green, let's look at yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. Oh! I look at Herc as an individual who took bastard music, mm -hmm. music that main media didn't care for, and brought that to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I look at Bam as having the most deepest collection than the two of us together of this bastard music that the world didn't want. And I look at myself as coming up with a delivery system, mm -hmm. how to deliver it. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm talking about the different colors that needed to be depicted. And that's where Joseph Sadler comes in. You know, when I talked about Einstein and the theory of relativity is when I'm watching heads on the floor, I am absolutely making sure that what I'm playing, while the female and male's heads is going up and down, whether I'm playing pop or rock, as I go to the next song, the heads are still going up and down. And then I talked about Benjamin Banneker. When I want you to stop, because he is the inventor of traffic light, right. when I want you to stop, I want you to stop at the same time. Right. And this is where my area is where Herc was more or less into the major crowds, but it was, I call the law of disarray, mm -hmm. where things are not totally in line. Right. Not making it more, no more, no less than what I did, mm -hmm. but it, just basically micro, microscopically managing how the music was distributed to their heads in front of us. Right. This played a major role, but at the same time, we played this music that mainstream America didn't give a fuck about. Yeah. Herc did it first. Yeah. We took breaks from pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative Caribbean, and once we found that piece, uh -huh. and I figured out a way to connect this according to the theory of relativity, uh -huh. which is matching it. Right. This is hip hop for me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And when I wanted you to stop is when I'm using Benjamin Banneker. This is how Joseph Sadler thinks. Right. I think like Eric, Eric Von Braun with the creator of the jet engine. Right. The jet engine hasn't changed in 40 plus years. When you look at a plane, and I'm on planes all the time, it's still a gigantic fan mm -hmm. that sucks in air and the air that blows out the other end propels the engine. The quick mix theory hasn't changed in almost 40 years. It's bigger, it's faster, and there's some kids that do it in a way that I wouldn't fathom knowing how to do, but it's the same way. So this is how Joseph Sadler thinks. 2017 is what I call the cyclical year of the birth of hip hop. It's because 2017, there are more young people, more kids that want to know what the 70s was doing than ever. So you, we were talking about the 80s and you know how they get credit. It's just that the 80s, was the cake finished. Mm -hmm. The 70s was the bakers mm -hmm. at the time. You know, so now the 70s for me is, so how was the cake made? It's the flour, the water, the eggs, the vanilla, the secret ingredients. Uh, and, and now with the interest of the 70s, it's really important that we as hip hoppers yeah. Whether here in the Bronx right now or in Japan or in Australia, uh -huh. like people need to know where this thing truly 
started. Right. You need to know who Cool Herc is. You need to know who Africa Bambadi is. You need to know who Grandmaster Flash is. And all of our prodigies that come after. Yeah. It's really important. Absolutely. You made a distinction between looping versus repeating. Yes. You know, and that that's a major distinction for people that know hip hop. I'm not trying to school the scholars like you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to microscopically school the layman mm -hmm. that might look at that and say, I don't see the difference. So if we were to quantify the professionals like yourself and myself, let's just say they're 30,000. There's 7 billion laymen. Mm -hmm. These are the people I need you to say, look at these moving pictures and tell me if you see the difference. Right. 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 This is how we could tell the difference between Bounce Rock, Roll Skate by Vaughn Mason and Good Times. Mm -hmm. You put them two together, the notes are playing exactly almost the same but it's two different records. You play Mary Jane by Rick James and then you play Keep Rising to the Top, you know, by Kenny Burke. They sound almost the same, but they come from the minds of two different people. These are the laments that you really gotta be careful because they are of the sponge year, which is 2017. Long after God takes me, I want these little kids to understand where this important thing came from, these three people. Okay. Now in the uh, video, another little little distinction you said, and this is not to focus on anything right. dramatic, right. but you did say it, there's only two of us left. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What made you say that? You know, as human beings, uh, we make mistakes. I'm getting a little teary-eyed right now. and. We do things that are not really right mm -hmm. when it comes to people. Mm -hmm. Bam is accused of doing some things that are really horrific, mm -hmm. extremely horrific. Uh, I feel for the families that it happened to. Mm -hmm. I really, 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 really feel for the families that this happened to but he is one of the people yeah. right. that's responsible for this yeah. like this is why I said like me and Herc yo man we don't speak too much anymore as a matter of fact we don't speak at all mm -hmm. and it's sad you know it's because we should be speaking mm -hmm. because when I talk to journalists I will always give them one third the story. Yeah. Because I have been sitting down and had coffee with Herc right. in decades. Right. Hadn't right. sat down with Bam and talked to over a coffee or a tea right. in decades. Right. I so badly want to do that. So when journal, journalists ask me, how does this work or how does that, 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 I'd rather give three thirds, which yeah. equals a whole. For, envy, for every journalist that I speak to, uh -huh. I can only give my history. Yeah. The other two parts is his story. Yeah. Right. So it makes it still to some degree incomplete. Uh -huh. So a horrific thing happened. So I say to Herc, it's only two of us now. Uh -huh. And I haven't seen Bam in, so, in a long period of time. Yeah. The bad things that took place are really horrific bad things, but he is a third of the story. But you still said two left. It's two left, it's just me and Herc. Yeah. And I'd love to be sitting down on the table. Yeah, yeah. Like this. Right. And saying, Herc, tell me who you are. Introduce yourself to me. Mm. Because now this story, this, 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 this period of time is so intensely interesting to so many people in the world. Absolutely. So now I want to know, I'll tell you who Joseph Sadler is and you tell me who Clive Campbell is. Right. And then let's go into how we became who we are. Right.
because when I was doing this, I was just in this for the moment. It was no plan like, yo, this technical thing that you're going to do is going to become the thing that every DJ does. I wasn't thinking that way. Yeah. I heard music a certain way and I'm like, it's not taking place. So let me use Joseph Sadler the Geek to figure this out. And this, right. is, and this is all that I can say. Yeah. But why aren't you and Kirk talking? I mean, there's no beef, right? I mean, there's no... I don't know. Yeah? I mean... It, it... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why we're not talking. I don't know. And it's sad. Yeah. Because sooner or later, God will come calling. Yeah. Then it will be one. And right. then God will come calling again. And then it will be none. Yeah. And the way that a lot of media do does today... Yesterday's not important. Right. They move on to the next thing. Absolutely, quickly. And so, I think for me, I looked at a lot of documentaries in this past year and a half, and they cannot be complete because you're not hearing it from here, from Joseph Sadler. Right. So if Joseph Sadler and Clive Campbell and Bamboo's real name, I don't really, really know, was sitting here talking, then you would hear an authentically incredible, powerful, 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 accurate story from the three people that physically did it. And until that point happens, all the documentaries will be inaccurate in one way or another. So let's talk about the get down. Yeah. How do you, okay, the get, I. I respectfully could not get on board with the get down. Cool. You said cool? Cool. Okay. Um, but it still had representations of yourself. Right. As well as Herc and Bam wasn't in there. Bam was in it too. He was? Yes, okay. he was. He was in it too. I mean, it was somebody who played Bam. Okay, was I didn't see that. I, right. Or I forgot. Uh, but I talked to other people, I'm not going to say names, but they, Bronx Pioneers, and they just they felt very strongly against it. Okay. So what brought you to the Get Down and how do you, you know, now that it's no longer with us, how do you feel about it now? The Get Down was not meant to be a documentary. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be a, 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 a pillar of facts wrapped around a story of a moment in time. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a documentary out of the Get Down, that is not the way Boz Lerman works that's not the way he works so when i was asked when i was asked to be a part of this i says to boss i will not be a part of this until you go get bam and you go get herc if you look at boss lerman's productions whether it was the great gatsby and all the other things he does this wonderful, powerful thing with a camera and he takes a story and he takes it out of context mm -hmm. but he makes it beautiful to look at right. So there's a gift and a curse in how people feel about that. Because prior to this, mm -hmm. Chuck, <laughs> nobody gave a fuck about wanting to do the 70s in the Bronx at all. True. So when this man walked up to me and says, listen, Flash, I don't care nothing about your success as being an artist and doing all the things when you became a star and all that there, that is not what I want to depict. Let me explain to you what I want to do. I do not want to do a documentary either. I want to take some kids mm -hmm. and let them live through you guys. Right. He made it very clear to me that this was not going to be a documentary. Gotcha. So, the curse is there are so many people that thought this thing should be a documentary. Uh -huh. If that was going to be the case, then I would have turned Boz down. So, the gift to it is no movie company, no production company, nobody that had the power to do this, and I, will, and I won't say no names. Never walked up to any of the three of us and say, let us do this. So, it kicked off all the things that came after it. Right. right. But like I said a few minutes ago, 
they're all still inaccurate. Right. Because the three are not sitting in the same room at the same time. So let's just put a let's let let's put a a, a factor of inaccurate on it. Mm -hmm. The get down is inaccurate. Right. All the other films are inaccurate too. We gotta work this out. This is our history. <laughs> this is it. So, we gotta, we gotta, all we gotta right. So, the, if you want to give the get down the biggest of inaccurate, okay, fine. Right. I think it was wonderful to do, and it started this whole ball rolling. Right. But until you get the three of us sitting together in a room where we can tell you what comes out of the horse's mouth, all of them well, are inaccurate because you got to go into our cranium. Well, Hurt doesn't do interviews almost never. What? What, not? what do you mean? Well, I don't know. I've had different experiences, so. Okay. I would love to sit down with Cool Herc, but uh, it's been uh, it's been difficult. It's been uh, <laughs> okay. It's been a challenge. Well, maybe and you know, man, but maybe before I leave planet Earth, this can happen. Okay. You guys want to cover the source one point? At one point. Yeah. I remember that was a legendary moment. <sighs> and we, uh, I still had that issue somewhere. That was yeah. amazing. How yeah. they pulled that off. <laughs> Cause I would do my little run around touring here and there to the, yeah. and then, you know, and Bam was doing his thing and Herc was doing his thing. And when I got the phone call, I think I was touring. I think yeah. I came off tour mm. and said, I'm going to do this one right here. Right. Because it doesn't get any more accurate than that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So if there's a, if there's a, uh, like there's this, 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 uh, slang term they use now, like the big three. Yeah, yeah. LeBron, LeBron and, you know, and, and, you know, the people of uh, the Golden State Warriors, you know, then it was Boston and, mm -hmm. you know. So if that's the case, then yeah. <laughs> what does that make us? Big three. Let me ask you this. Are people jealous of Grandmaster Flash? I, I'll i just tell you. My opinion is, I think they are. What do you mean? Okay, you want me to tell you what I know? Yeah. I know that a lot of us see you you're on tour all year. You, you're, you're in control of your brand. You have multi layers to your success and your your uh, career right at this point. And then uh, honestly, a lot of uh, others are not in as such a good position. Right. Ultimately, that breeds envy. You've never felt that at all? Um, I, like I told you earlier in the interview, it's critically important that I go around the world and tell these people where this thing comes from. Mm -hmm. Now, since I'm only one person and I can only be in one place at one time, a lot of times people don't see me. But when I find out about certain events, I make it a point to go to them. When I walk into a room and I see some of my old friends, it's powerful love. Right, okay. It's powerful, powerful love. Like I just came from doing an event uh, that was uh, in honor of DJs that passed away mm -hmm. in the Bronx here at Sal's, at uh, Sal who used to own Disco Fever has a club called Club Evil. I was just there. Yeah. Got love. all the love, you know, it, 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 it's incredibly, it was incredible, you know, so this is what I say. I personally feel whether you are in music machinery, uh, uh, medicine, or whatever it is that you do, mm -hmm. it is your own personal responsibility to be up on the times mm -hmm. and to keep, and make yourself visible to people because it's all a people business. Yes. It's extremely important. I've had some real rough times. Yes. I've been fucked over. Mm -hmm. I've had some people that were near and dear to me that I raised mm. fuck me over. Mm. I was on the ground at the lowest of my low. I went through a period of time where I was sniffing cocaine, mm -hmm. smoking it, mm -hmm. drinking, walked away from my turntables, mm -hmm. almost lost my life, not once, but twice because of the overdose of cocaine. Like I've been through some real fucked up times. I watched my mother, my father and my grandmother all died at the same time in the same month. Wow. And as I passed out this particular time from cocaine, from cocaine, 
I went into somewhat of like a coma like and I had this intense conversation with God then I begged if you could allow me to wake up one more time with the fucking over that I had if you just allow me to wake up this one time I will drop cocaine I will forgive the people and the fellas that used to roll with me for fucking me over and allow me to rebuild my career. The first person he got me with, and this was an 18 year walk, the first person they got me with was Rusa Blue, who started doing bookings for me. There was this other person by the name of Greg Cannon. Greg Cannon was uh, this white guy who done this interesting thing for a job. He says, Flash, although there are this confusion on who's grandmaster and who's not, I'm going to introduce you to this new thing that's happening. But here's the key. You have to tell people what you're thinking. You have to tell people how you're feeling. You almost got to tell people what kind of cereal, cereal you ate this morning. You got to kind of ask people when you stubbed your toe. I'm like, fuck you, Greg. I'm not doing it. I'm a real private person. I'm not telling people shit. He says, Flash, if you do this, they will know the difference of Joseph Sadler, Grandmaster Flash, and the people that used to roll with you. You will now become your own person. I'm like, Greg, fuck you. I'm not doing it. He says, Flash, please. Eventually, he wore me down. He did this work for the Army and for this place where they used to sell electronics downtown, downtown called JNR Music World. He said it's called the Internet. I says, this is what? He says this, he says, Flash, just listen to me before you curse me out again. He says, there's these places where you could put sentences on how you're feeling today and what you're dealing. And I'm gonna build this virtual house for you called a, a, a website. I'm like, what? <laughs> a what? He says that in this house, there's going to be pictures of you and things and stories and this and that, that, that and I promise you if you feed this house and you feed this thing called the internet people will find out who Joseph Sadler is and to this day I kiss the ground that he walks on yeah. because when I was flat on my face and coked out of my mind and lost everything that I loved. I had to figure out how I was gonna do this. So my sister Penny and Greg Cannon, and a woman I tell you that I loved, that lived three blocks from me, her name was Paulette Jeffrey. These three people figured out a way for me to get up, and I'm getting a little teary-eyed right now, and do what you did before these people joined you. People will accept you, but you have to keep feeding the machine. You gotta keep putting things in this place called a website. And you have to start putting these things, this the verbiage of what you did today. You tripped and you, you, you was on the swings today and you fell off them. Uh, a, a fly flew, flew in your mouth and you had to spit it out. You know, you had to tell people these things. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And I did this right. for the past 18 years. Right. Yeah. And I've separated myself back to the place I was when I was alone before anybody joined me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now I do this uh -huh. Uh -huh. around the planet. Right. Right. Okay. God is wonderful. Absolutely. And today I have a team, I, I run a business called Grandmaster Flash Enterprises, and then, like you said, the layers of people, I have 10 people, right. you know, two attorneys right. that protect my trademark. Wow. I have an online specialist. Mm -hmm. I have my person, my PR, who's Melissa, who's with me today. You know, I have uh, 
technicians that are in my recording studio and I also own a, vi vi a video studio and this is and I have all these people around me mm -hmm. that are connected in the way that I think yeah. that allow me to do what I do because I feel in my heart that I'm still needed you are where I was in some situations where people said what you do don't matter and you are not needed. Yeah. I am doing Madison Square Garden uh -huh. as a DJ, September 12th. Wow. Two days later, I fly to Brazil and I'm playing in front of 20,000 people wow. waiting for me and I'm headlining. Right. Me, my two turntables, mixer and a microphone. Uh -huh. So. And I, and I have to tell you, Chuck, I come from a school of people that have the same knowledge that I have. And under all the adversity that I had, God put the right people with me and said, I'm going to allow you to live again. Get up. And, it's, and I call it the slow walk to the big tent. And the reason why I call it the slow walk to the big tent is when I do these festivals, at first, they will put me in the little tent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I look at them like, so who's playing in that tent? Mm -hmm. So it's here, it's five years later, now I play in the big tent. That's what's up, that's what's up. I play in the big tent, so I'm playing Mardi Gras, Apache, um, Johnny the Fox, I can't stop. I'm playing breaks in the big tent in front of 20,000 people. Wow. So I'm taking what I did right here and I'm bringing it over there. Right, right here. In the God is front. absolutely wonderful. That's beautiful. So for me, I disagree with you saying that people are jealous of me because I'm taking what we all collectively did and I'm playing with the big boys. Yeah with this little music Ooh. that comes from this little town Ooh. called the South Bronx. Beautiful, beautiful. Wait, I want to ask one, one more. Oh, hold on. All right, one, one more, one, one more. more. But I, wanted, I had to let that be that. <laughs> <laughs> so you and I know hip hop is more than just rap music, but sure. what, do you, what do you feel about the state of hip hop now? The culture, as well as the music? What it has done, it went from this little teeny dot that it was Call it South Bronx, uh -huh. and it has grown to tentacles. Uh -huh. And these tentacles have roads uh -huh. that lead to other places on this blue marble called planet Earth. Uh -huh. It has allowed me to do what I did right here, uh -huh. all the way over there. Yeah. Oh, because if it would have remained an underground forum where just cassettes are being heard, yeah. I don't know why if I'd be here talking to you. Right. So hip hop has grown to the point where it is like octopus and these huge, gigantic tentacles. You know, for me, I look at hip hop like this, like I look at this big tree right here. This trunk represents Flash, Herc, and Bam. And all these leaves represent the music, the lyric, the breakdancing, the MC, the DJ, the graffiti. So now hip hop went from this little seedling mm -hmm. to this gigantic tree with all these tentacles. Right, right. It allows me to get on a plane when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. And I gotta be in business class. Absolutely. <laughs> and and, and, and this, is, this is the way that it is. Yeah. And this is you guys made me this person. Right. You know, I was just a geek, <laughs> you know, and geeks weren't cool back then. Right. So now, and for a long time, I kept that like really quiet right. so um i had to grandmaster flash had to be yo and dope and you know what i'm saying and hot and fly and all that shit. but really joseph sadler was this right. einstein's theory of relativity benjamin banneker and eric von braun mm. for most of my life right. i was a fucking geek man right. but it wasn't cool to be a geek then right 
I'm fuck, I'm, it's cool to be a geek right Absolutely. now. So I'm talking about geekism like a motherfucker. The geek put me right here, That's and the geek fine. became that. I'm looking at the cameraman. He always <laughs> makes fun of me, and I'm talking to you. Geek. Uh, Revenge of the geeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the geeks got it. original geek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I fucking love that. So, you know, talking to my video videographer Lenny Moore, you know, we go back and forth with this all the fucking time, yeah. man. So hip hop was a seedling, yeah. a little seedling. And look at it now. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's it's yeah. it's a real big tree now. Yeah. Thank you. What's yeah. wonderful? Yeah. Well, I salute you, my brother. Thank you so much. True king. Thank you.